could have been. Okay. What did we do after the Lunar Eclipse one? I don't know. <laughs> what did we talk about last week? Toby. Oh yeah, the Beatles. Yeah, the Beatles. Tobias and the Beatles. Yeah, I think the Eclipse was the one before that. Welcome, Dean Sarah, to our book club, Sci-Fi on Ice. And this week we are reading book number 11, as recommended by Sarah, called How to Get Back to the Forest by Sophia Sumatar. I hope I pronounced that right. And uh, it's about some adolescents and some mind control Beetlejuice and the relationships between some friends and some thought-provoking ideas. So, um, how did you guys, how do you guys like this one? Oh. Dean, you want to go first? Yeah, sure. Um, it, it grabbed me at the beginning and then kind of lost me again in the middle and then grabbed me again at the end so I quite enjoyed it's kind of mm. yeah it was a uh, it wasn't bad it, it just it, it lost me at one stage and then it got me back again and it's so well tell, tell I, us about what I kind how of like got... parts of it and... yeah yeah tell us or tell us about how it how it got you like was it like a hook or something or like a, something interesting the I quite liked how it how it sh- shifted between them being at camp mm. and then her remembering camp. camp. That's not what I thought and... you were gonna say. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, sorry. I, was gonna say? Well, I thought you were gonna talk about like the whole puking thing and learning, uh, learning about this. Uh, this, you know, because it's sort of like, the, it starts with the urban, kind of, it talks about urban legends at the beginning of the story, right? And so this idea that there's this, um, something inside you that you've got to puke out, you know, because the kids are like, well, you know, we, we joke about urban legends all the time, but, you know, this sounds a bit too much, right? But it ends up yeah. being, but it ends up being full and real, and they see it, and it's like, for me as a reader, you're like, yeah, okay, I'm in, right? Like, what's, like, what, what's this about? Like, that, is that, that's what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> so what I'm getting there. Okay, all right, keep going. I'll I'll, I'll back off. I'll back off. No, no. So so that was the the, the way between what you know it's, it's you're in the moment and then mm. you're remembering the past. Um, I'd quite enjoyed that. And then yeah, obviously the this uh, bug, for lack of a better phrase, Beetlejuice. Um, that's <laughs> the beetle juice that's being secreted. Mm. Um, which kind of made me think back to the the stories of kind of fluoride in the in the tap water, yeah. To you know keep the population malleable. Mm. Um, so that was that was quite an, an interesting little trigger to remembering something. And then and then noticing that that kind of lull and the kind of peaks and valleys in her emotions later in the story that was also quite quite interesting right so i kind of yeah it's interesting i didn't get that i sort of i was kind of captivated the whole way through and and it being quite a short story i maybe i guess was it was it the bit when um she's in the when is it oh what's the boy's name is it toby or max what's the boy's name um there is a Max, but it's not a boy. Oh, um, okay. Because yeah. <laughs> Max gets pregnant. Yes, good, yeah. good point. Boys <laughs> don't get pregnant. Oh, that, okay, that just threw me. Um, and I, okay, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, okay, I was going to talk about something else, but okay, um, 
No, but I think, um, I don't know, I think it, like, it seemed in nicely to sort of, you know, what was at stake with, um, because this what kind of, for me, there was, like, the theme of liberation, right? Like, he, what, what you would do to get rid of it, and, you know, because they, they're not cool with doing it. They're like, even when they see it, they're still like, yeah, we saw it, but I'm still not cool with doing it, and, um, so I quite, I kind of like that, that I thought, I thought well, it was, yep. They didn't all see it. Only the protagonist saw it, and then she flushed the toilet. Yeah, but but they believed it, right? Well, first of all, C learns it from Puss, who and Puss is the the person that we don't know. Um, mm. And so you know, and then but 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 C is the kind of girl that we believe, right? Because she's she is that kind of person who like she'll tell you something, you'll be like, yeah, even though it's crazy, but we sort of, we believe it, and, um... I got, I got a different impression from everyone else's attitude towards her, except yeah. for the, the, the author, like, the protagonist. Mm. Um, yeah. she had that feeling towards, uh, C, but everyone else thought she was weird, and argumentative, and stubborn. Mm. Because you can see, I think, later on, they're like, you know, they said they were friends or something, and she's like, oh, I guess we are. Um, because... It felt to me like C was ostracized by the others, and like she was just this wild card on the outskirts, and everyone was like, "Okay, yeah, you're cool because you don't play by the rules." But everyone's so indoctrinated that they're like, they're not really like they don't really like that. Yeah. Uh, that the impression I got from her, or I should say, from the others' interpretation of her. Because there were quite a few of them in the bathroom that were saying, like, you need to stop. And it and mm. I didn't get the impression if they were making themselves be sick or they were being sick because someone was being sick. You know, that just involuntary gagging reflex of, yeah. like, oh, someone's vomited. Oh, and I'm going to vomit too. That's yeah. the impression I got because only she was still holding the toothbrush. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I got that as well with the, the, is the idea of doing it that made them revile you know the thought or make them feel sick not not revile um mm. yeah no yes to that and um all right so where are we where are we, we... one thing i liked in the story is the idea of the parent figures mm. um because yeah like that's just such a interesting concept and how they kind of explained it without really going into it yes um and they say, like, it's important to have it so you remember that you lost something and making that kind of camp, cor uh, like, the, I want to say colleagues, but that's not the right word, the cohort, um, all that much stronger because they're supposed to be, like, almost one entity. And so mm. they're taken away from their pa parents or sent away, I assume taken because of the end of the story where Max is so reluctant to be a mother. Um because she's a woman um but she, you know, they have Maybe. these like mother figures and father figures that are just like these random objects and it's and she's like the protagonist says like she doesn't even know if she picked it out so maybe it was something her mother said like oh this is my favorite blue lamp or something and mm. it's just like then that begs the question of like well then why is it this random ass blue lamp um and like what what significance does that have? Um, like, it begs so many questions. It's such an interesting concept because it's like they're there, but they're not really there. Yeah, I liked I liked the aspect of sort of drawing. Yeah, it, like as this new idea, and I guess it was symbolism is what came to mind for me. Is that what the kids thought represented their parents? And and uh, was it given? Was it the parents that said this is what represents me? Like here you go, I give it to you. Or was it just a gift? Was it, it just doesn't a gift? Say. It doesn't say. Yeah. She says she doesn't even remember if she mm. picked it out. So it means she doesn't remember how it came to be her mother figure. Especially the lamp, yeah, because the lamp one is is, a, is kind of you can see it being a symbol if you wanted it. But whereas the plaque thing, what what's the phrase? Um, that the, uh, something like you will be. Wait, I've got it on the screen. Um, what is it? What is the oh, father's one? Always you, be yourself. Always be yourself. Yeah, 
Like, you can imagine that being, like, a little gift from the dad. It's like, yeah, yeah, hey, here you go, kid. You know, always be yourself. Like, a little bit cheesy, but... But then it's... I don't know, yeah. I, but I did, I did like that, whereas... Because, um... Part of the theme of liberation where is the, um... And this is a very North American thing that I, I don't relate to that much, is that in summer they go to these camps from a very young age and like it's sort of the parents time to go hey we want the summer for a few weeks or a few months to ourselves kids you know you you see you later kind of thing although in this story it's uh, indefinite right it's like it's, it's called like a season or a time some kind of time or yeah, it's no, a continuation don't... of summer it's not like get away from them it's just because parents have to work all year but school isn't all year that's why they have summer camp yeah and the and the idea that um these these are the places where urban uh, legends like manifest and as well as um i guess the shenanigans they get up to shenanigans at the these kind of places right and uh so from an outsider for as a, as a non north american it was you'd kind of get inside like what these kids might be thinking and perceive perceive these experiences but uh, I I digress from the actual story. Um... Well, I think it takes that that concept of um, you're at summer camp for that one year and you become this cohesive group because you do all these things together. Like camp is great for um, like team building mm. things like that because they do all these projects together. They go on outings. They have to build things and make things and discover things. So it does build on that because they say like this cohort will go into the food industry and then mm. like the previous yeah. went into the army. So they're obviously meant to stay as that group for like the rest of their lives. So they do want to build on that kind of um, cohesive connectedness that comes from being at camp. Not that I have ever been myself. Um, but I, yeah, it's again, it's an interesting kind of idea that continuation because, yeah, the parents send them off, so they're present, but they're not. Like, they're not mm. physically present, but there's a memento. Um, and they're there, yeah, to kind of find themselves. But also, in the story, they're becoming more indoctrinated and actually kind of losing a sense of themselves because they're losing their family. And they're meant to just be, like, you know, group 188 or whatever. Yeah, but, but I think that's the point of the camp. It, at no point do they say, "Oh, it's like a summer camp." They just say, yeah. Yeah. "It could just yeah, be no, I, I, a, like yeah. a, in fact, an indoctrination camp," because from there they move off. Because the whole class, her one went to the food industry, and later they say three out of five end up going to the military, mm. and they say the kids are going at from the age of eight. So, yeah, for me, it doesn't sound like you ever leave you start you go there as a child and you leave as an adult what do you guys think of jody the camp the the you know the happy you can you know the happy go lucky like hey kids you know this is the place where that everything's great you know they just she just does the whole um just puts a positive spin on everything and then you and then you just they, that's the point where uh, the kids drop the f bomb. Like, what do they? They change one of the mantras or the slogans of the camp into like, yeah, um, fuck what, your neighbor. Yeah, that one. I loved. I love that because you could sort of relate to that. Obviously, you know, as a kid, you go through that like rebellion sort of thing, and and there is so to, on. This is I'm speaking to the indoctrination thing. So on one hand, there's the indoctrination, but then kids also have that natural um, tendency to kind of go wait what's going on you know and they'll mm -hmm. do they'll do that yeah now i think i got the impression like the summer camp was like the transit transition period because later um she visits mac so obviously they're not living together even though mm. they were in the cohort um but i kind of get the impression that yeah like jody is there to assist with this transition period where they were at home with their parents but now then need to be in the workforce in their allotted role. And it's to kind of get them disconnected from family and working towards the, the ultimate aim 
that there must be. Um, but it's, yeah, and I just feel like this camp is an in, in this intermission in between, a bit like school, um, where we, you know, train them and get them ready to then go and join the workforce effectively. And it's just like this transition period where they're supposed to learn these skills and like the some skills more than others and, you know, more indoctrination than others, mm. but it's a similar concept. But yeah, no, like the life skills capitalized. Yeah. Yeah. And then it was sort of, they were sort of throwaway lines. Right. And then the author makes, what is it? Sort of, not like a, like a, like kind of a joke, like, cause they kind of joke about it. Like, yeah, there's like a life skill. And I can't remember which example it is. Uh, which yeah she talks about forgetting and she's mm. like no forgetting is a life skill mm. it's like yeah that's I like, sad i like their comparison with school because yes yeah, she refers to the camp like a factory and that sort of when she i don't know this is sort of the, at the end of the book the story but but it's sort of you kind of get that feeling like oh yeah you know it was all it's all sort of systematized like it's this they do that and then everything's all planned like there's i get and i guess from that side point you know they've got the itinerary like at this time you do this and then that time you do that and uh yeah i kind of yeah i could uh could see that on a totally different note the mm. one thing i didn't like was when they were in the forest and she randomly has to take a shit mm. <laughs> Look, why was that in there Probably. I don't I, okay. understand. I think, uh, you know, it. these sort of, you might have like sort of embarrassing um, experiences at these sort of things. And I think, I don't know, I related to it personally. <laughs> it's so random. It's like, oh, and then, oh, and then I needed to take a dump. And it's like the way she phrased it as well. It's just like, what? Well, I think I'm that... sorry. Did I just read that? Yeah, it was a bit random. But the, I think there was like the tension... But maybe it was weird when she, like, held her hand, even though, like, despite the fact that I just did that, and then she grabs my hand, and and she knew yeah, that I that was doing that. Yeah, that made me feel yeah. Like, yeah, it was a bit unnecessary. I think, like, yeah, it's like, you know, the joke about how, like, you know, why why don't uh, authors or screenwriters include these, these everyday moments of life? And it's like, yeah, it doesn't kind of carry the story. But it's it's got that, ten that, that tension, and... Um, I think it, yeah, maybe it half works. It sort of felt, did it add to that moment when they were sort of running away? And maybe my criticism of that scene was that, like, how the camp people were kind of like, yeah, well, we know, we don't mind because you're not a boy and a girl, so we we don't you mind. Even though they go looking for them later, like, because they're like, okay, it's midnight, so we got to go collect you all now. It yeah, sort of they felt... Yeah, though. They're like, oh, two girls can't be get up, getting up to no good. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. But then maybe it's just because they just don't want pregnancy. Maybe they don't yeah. actually care about fooling around. They just don't want someone knocked up. Well, they just handed out um the condoms like for for yeah. if if boys and girls did go, they were like, "We'll take this, right?" And so that was there was like, "Well, as long as you don't do that, then you're fine." And and, and I guess in a normal everyday camp, they probably. I don't know what they do, but I guess that's the last thing that they would want to explain to um, parents. Oh, yeah, by the way, your daughter? Yeah. <laughs> here's here's a booklet. You might want to read about this. Here are your options. I don't know. Uh, goodbye? <laughs> Question mark? Yeah, I feel like maybe, with, just going back to like the dumping episode, uh, maybe she wanted to highlight the, that intimacy between them, that she was a good friend, mm. even though she maybe was a wild card. And they had this kind of acceptance of each other um, that sh they, they, the protagonist appreciated. But I just think, yeah, could it have been done differently without her taking a dump randomly in the forest? Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I mean, you know, I'm halfway sold on it. I didn't, it didn't bother me, but it did kind of make you go, oh, okay. Um, it did sort of raise not the stakes but it raised the sort of oh what's going on here? Uh, to me it, yeah it derailed because it's like you're following and i really like all the concepts she's bringing like the author brought up all these uh like the, the parent figures and the, the bugs controlling their emotions mm. um 
like all these different concepts, and then it's like, and then she took a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it requires <laughs> deeper thinking. I don't know. I don't have the answer. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, well, let's let's. Uh, I don't know if finish is the right. Well, uh, and the idea of the um, the Beetlejuice. I you know because on one hand. I quite like the mystique or, you know, the, the mystery around, um, you know, what it actually does. I mean, no, 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 how, like, the origins of it, because it doesn't, it doesn't say it, and maybe it doesn't matter, it makes it kind of interesting, the, you know, that there's, okay, there's this thing inside you, and, and, and like, why is it a beetle, and, okay, the, it, 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 um, uh, what is it, um, secretes this fluid or beetle juice that, uh, what is it, mellows you out, so you don't have ADHD, because yeah. apparently all kids in the future have ADHD, I guess, oh, or... I, I didn't get that. No? Well, what was it, what was... I just thought it was emotion, like, any adverse rem emotion, whether it was sad or anger or anything like that, it was just to keep them all malleable and, you know, nice, polite children kind of thing. Right. Um, because right. she said that C, they figured out C had lost her first one when she had a tantrum and mm. she started throwing yeah. things. And because she got so overworked, they realized that she didn't have the bug anymore. Yeah. I didn't think yeah. it was ADHD, it was just emotion. Oh, I was just an, ex just an example of, yeah, of um, sort of like a parent can't, can't control the kids the way they want because if you... You know, ideally, like especially you come home from work, the last thing you want to do is um, is deal with um, like tantrums and anything that I don't know that logic can't um, satisfy. You know, um, and I'm probably speaking from personal experience here, where you know you you think, oh, I just do this, or you, and you think the hard work is you probably need to do things like do the bonding rather than putting your feet up and you know, like after you, after a hard day at work, you probably want to put your feet up, but, you, but truth is, you, you know, you need to do the hard work of looking after your kids, and so it's like a escape for the parents to go, here's a beetle in, inside you, and now you're going to be malleable, and you'll, I'll tell you to go study or clean your room, and you'll do that, but yeah. Yeah, no, that's the impression I got. I just thought it was any extreme mm. emotion. Yeah, and I quite like how when C, when it's removed from C, when she's has that liberation moment and she's like saying how great it is and how great she feels, and and as a reader you're sort of like, I don't know, maybe thinking of your own times where you've sort of felt a bit, you know, you were jumping from the rooftop. I don't know if you've done that, but I've done it, and it felt great. <laughs> Never jumped from a rooftop, no. Well, jumped on top of a rooftop, no. I've, I've been on roofs, yes. I probably had a beer in my hand when I did it, but it was still fun and <laughs> yeah. And there, ladies and gentlemen, is the gender divide. What? Look, <laughs> I don't know. I got nothing wrong with girls jumping on roofs. It's just Eight. less likely, is my yeah. argument. It's yeah. Less, not not gonna hundred percent, just less likely, maybe. Mm. Dean, and yeah. come in, and what, 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 uh, <laughs> contribute? What did you um, think about the dump in the forest? It, it happens, I mean, it's, it didn't, <laughs> it didn't really... Breathing happens too, right? It was a bit of comic relief in, in a, uh, what was probably quite a serious, well, not a serious, but a, a very memorable experience and sometimes it's the the most inundating thing happening that yeah that just kind of cements it so i mean if she could have fallen over or whatever but uh yeah it doesn't really it didn't re really that's not where i got lost yeah for me um i mean it, it is weird it's yeah but the uh, but the, Hey, when you when you write for a living, yeah, let your freak flag fly. <laughs> yeah, 
it's a bit of liberation, a bit of grunge, punk, some of these themes are coming through, what are they, they even flip off the stars at one point, is it, is that right? And you're like, hey, don't do that, stars are cool, or they're big balls of fire from some faraway place, so, so be careful. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, 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 I quite liked the part up until there. So going through the forest, it was quite descriptive. And uh, I mean, it, it did seem a little pointless than going just to go into this little circle and, you know, flipping the bird to the their neighbors in the sky. Mm. Um, and then, you know, it, it comes full circle towards the end where, you know, she says looking down into the clearing. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's listening to her as, as an, an older, as an adult many years later, um, and just how that they, they've all become aware of, oh, every time you get nauseous, you need to go and they, they put you over, you, to, you know, they put you under, um, even with that happening, just for mild nausea, I mean, it doesn't trigger anybody's yeah. kind of survival instincts long enough for them to go, uh, something's wrong, before the the old beetle juice kicks in and goes, oh, everything's fine, just chill. I wish there was like a parallel with the movie Beetlejuice, but I got nothing. I got, so, it's just, it's just a coincidence. All it is, but uh, um, oh, so what else we got about the story? I sort of feel like, well, it, the it way feels that like we, she's yeah. busy losing her mind towards the end, like she's having some serious mental breakdown, um, which is not being helped by you know this mood stabilizer, which is mm. intermittent at best. Because it, it it's not it's not constant. No, I, that's why I think it's just like extreme emotion. Like it's it doesn't affect you kind of day to day, but like if you say got really upset and started crying, or you got into a rage, that's when I I. That's when I thought it was kind of like no no no, go back to equilibrium. Yeah, and if there was. But, I- Sometimes the, the things like the, like removing this bug or this mysterious thing that you don't know that you have is sort of well if if it never happened you know it would just yeah like you say with equilibrium it would just be well that's the normal you know and like if if we today were to find out that we had something and then we removed it then yeah our perceptions would be different but uh, but it's not and so it's sort of yeah what what does it say in what is the story telling us and so that. Yeah, there's probably a little bit of criticism there, but um, in regards to that, but I still like I still like the um, the themes of of liberation and the difficulty of of um, what is it what is that word when you come when you're growing up, they're coming to terms with coming of age. Is that the like they're maturing? Yeah, coming. Yeah, and uh, so. I, I did like that, and I could relate to a lot of the parts to it, and I guess, yeah, the emotion, the emotional center is sort of... Well, yeah. I just, I want to add, because I, I agree with Dean, like, I think, yeah, she is kind of losing her mind and losing her grip, because, like, things are starting to add up to what she found out at camp. Um, mm. But also, like, the fact that she doesn't want to have kids, and this right. isn't necessarily something that her and, I assume, her husband agreed on and the fact that max is so anxious about having a baby because they're going to be generation eight and they're they know what's going to happen that it when they're eight even younger they're going to be taken that's why i get the impression that they're taken from the parents because Mm. no parent would be like okay sure time to go and off and like now time to forget me um and Like, their anxiety of wanting to continue in this cycle and to be part of it. Um, And they're, you know, wanting to opt out, basically. But Mm. 
you know, Max is stuck not being able to choose now. Um, and so, yeah, that kind of pressure of having to contribute because, I mean, like, I have often thought of, like, what is the point of having a child when they're going to have to grow up in the world as it is with, like, the incredible climate change and the toxicity and the negativity and all the hate that's out there. And I just think it's it's better if they don't. Like, why would I want to bring a life into this world when I know what they're going to struggle with? And, like, it's, yeah, it's a clash because as much as I would enjoy raising a child, do I want to inflict this world upon them? And that's the impression I get as a woman um, from that relate that end their conversation back and forth because right. they don't want to have to contribute but it's also what's expected of them. They're cogs in a machine, and that's their role. Like, that is part of it. Yes, I see the dilemma there with... I, and I guess if you... And, and it can be painted that way. I guess uh, your life is definitely a, a struggle, and, um, and uh, I... Perhaps I don't see it negatively, but I can see I, I it definitely adds up what you say. So, well, I just think more so in their reality because yeah. they don't have that connection to their parents. So, like here, obviously in our reality, there's there is lots of positivity. There is still that human connection, but I think in their reality, that connection is very limited. It's like basically it sounds like it's just their camp cohort and like. That's where the circle ends. Mm. They don't have. Is it what is it? Uh, what is it that we have in our? Is it is it like the flicker of hope? Is that what we? Even though we've got all these tragi- tragedies and all the, the the suffering that we have in our world, is it something about hope that means that we keep we keep uh, keep what is it trudging on? Yeah. But I yeah. think, yeah, it just kind of evokes that, to me, it evokes that art, that discussion, that conflict. Um, and, yeah, because I think that's, I, I like the story, because there's lots of different things that kind of remind you of issues in our reality. Um, but it's, you know, taken to a certain extreme. Um, it's just, yeah, even though it's short, I think it brings up a lot of connections. Yeah, no, I, I actually quite liked, uh, c- considering it was quite short, I quite liked the um, the impact, you know, or how much it was able to cover succinctly and and including the poop scene. But, uh, you know, from start to finish, it really did cover a lot, um, you know, a coming of age where these um, characters experience something quite um, significant and of and as we've discussed, a lot of commentary on on uh, how we structure the world around us, you know, with these little f- factories of, of um, whether it's school or, or um, these summer camps where, and I think I said this before, where, I, and I assume that in summer camps the activities are all itinerized, um, you know, from 9 till mm-hmm. 10 you do this, and, and uh, whereas, I don't know, and I mean, and part of me, sort of thing today I, I'm I'm hoping that camp these days is a little bit more oh I don't know what the word is um I want to say less structured because you know structure is just a part of life right but uh, no, but you no, know they're, they're probably still timetabled yeah people have jobs to do but you know that it's more flexible but with but you know the constraints obviously you know that you don't uh, have daughters get pregnant and you know these sort of rules are there, but at the same time, uh, not, I guess, uh, inhibiting the w- them with these mundane life skills like forgetting and and these. Uh, p- I, I feel like the uh, these um what are, what do they call the symbols? The artifacts of the parents are like um something to do with possessions, like you know our children possessions of their parents, and um because the these uh. What were they called again? Parent figures. Parent figures. Yeah, the, the parent figures were 
these uh, symbols of this sort of, um, let me get this right, um, nah, I'm, nah, I'm wrong. I was going to say where they come from, but, but it doesn't do that. It's, it's sort of some kind of, like, attached memory to where they, where they came from, but it's not, it doesn't signify where they come from, so it's, no, it doesn't work. Um, no, I wish I could take that back. Okay, um, <laughs> help me out. Do you guys have anything more to add about the parent figures, or should we move on? No, I mean, I think I said before, like, I like it as a concept, because, mm. like, parents, when you when you go to camp, or when you move away from home, like, you have mementos of them, you have the memory without their physical presence, um, and so you're reminded, like, you're constantly aware that there are these people, and, you know hopefully you have those positive connotations and you miss them but they're not essential to you living your life they're just like these relics of where you came from their memories um and so like taking that to extreme yeah it's just it's a lamp and a placard it's a book and a god knows what else mm. um because it's just all that is what's essential in their reality is that you are aware of what you've lost so that you value what you have. Yeah, and and also the another thing was about um the these new what what do you call these camp? What, what are the people? What are, Jody and um what's Hunky Hunky, Hunky Duncan? Duncan. Yeah, the. What are they called? Camp. Um, like they're the kind of like the um, they're kind of like the foster parents while while they're there. But they but at the same, you know but they're not the real parents. And so I you, feel like of them as babysitters. Yeah. Yeah, and no, that babysitter is probably a better um, a better uh, analogy of them. And they and it's interesting how they. Yeah, it's still, yeah, it's still, um, still in my mind about this, uh, because if it's like they've asked them, and you've got to bring your parent figures along, and sort of like, is it like satiate like their need to like go and call their parents and be like, "Mommy, Daddy, you know, like I miss you, and I want to come home," and I get, which I guess some kids might do, or especially the kids that don't want to go to the camp. I don't know. I've seen just from the movies, the American movies, I've seen where like you see the scenes. Where um, I can't think of it, of an example, but I'm sure there are many where you know where the kids are trying to escape this yeah. the camp. Well, even kids who want to go still get homesick. Everybody yeah. gets homesick. All right, I think okay, I think I've definitely killed that um, concept in the story. Um, anything else we want to add before we move on? Dean, you've been a bit quiet. Um. What about the mixes? Wow, the mixes. That was said so casually. Well, I, I don't know. I couldn't. I, I was just like, oh man, are they partying all the time, or was it? You know, they're, they're trying to make this like cool, trying to make it really cool. No, but it, if you think of of everything that that is happening in that society and and the way that everyone's being groomed for you know, the next phase, mm. the mixes are probably exactly, it's like glorified, you know, e-dating or, you know, group dates. Right. To, to kind of foster relations, um, be, you know, finding a partner because they, you know, it doesn't matter whether you straight or, or gay, lesbian, whatever, you know, your partner comes with. Mm. Um, if you had a partner, if you hadn't, that was probably going to be where you would meet them. But that was probably the intention behind the mixer is to, you know, get you with someone in your own, in your own group. Mm. And then make those babies. But after you've settled down with a job and are married. And then send Not those babies to camp. Yep. Unless, yeah, more, unless, more your ki- unless your kids find out about the Beetlejuice. Well, I mean, they don't because the kids are indoctrinated 
Like, and kids are kids are gullible. Yeah. <laughs> Especially too. Yeah, but like this, yeah. the, this journal that C left her. You know, yeah. uh, as she was being taken away, she she flung this journal at her and said, "You know, take this." It would have been nicer. Oh well, I would have enjoyed knowing some more. It was what was written inside that journal. Well, she's telling us from uh, at that point, right? Yeah, because well, I mean, from the point of view of C, and then obviously her experiences, you know, having the bug multiple times in and out and in and out and in and out. Mm. But yeah, she says like she just writes what she thinks could possibly be poetry, but it's just gibberish. So she does kind of write about it, but then again, maybe she was being obscure because a journal can be so easily read, and it's evidence. Yeah. Because it's very vague what she did write from what she said, and it was like. Yeah, it's just random sentences and phrases. Last random thing I, I want to bring up is, well, maybe everything I'm... Okay, um, is the the hair dye at the beginning. And I, and just thought, I was kind of curious to kind of, like, you know, obviously there was the, the details of it. She was like, oh, she's this poor person living on the street. But she's got red dyed hair. And then she was like, oh, I wonder. Maybe, you know, there was... A little bit too much of um, what do you call it? Like into the the wandering mind. We thought, okay, is that does that connect with the with the story? Because doesn't she finish? How does it? Does the story finish about the stars or the or about um puss? Puss is the one. Was it puss or puss? I don't know. Um, uh, help me out. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. I don't remember this hair dye incident, to be honest. At the, at the beginning. Like, well, she she just said that, you know, she, she wishes she could see Puss and see in a, a train station. Uh, yeah, she does it in a train room, station. That's then, right. Yeah. I was, I was thinking then, of like a toilet or something, but it's a, train, yeah. it's a toilet in a train station or something. And then, you know, there'd be there'd be red blood everywhere, but it would actually just be hair dye because uh, Puss was dyeing her hair in the in the basin. Yeah, is but that also a... because they would be constantly throwing up, trying to get the bug out every time. Well, for C, right? But Puss was yeah. she was supposed to be the um, what is it? The archetype of the free person. She was she was always free of it, right? She just knew and she told people isn't that right yeah she was the one that was like she was like the crazy person or whatever going well not crazy but you know what i mean like the one that goes around telling people about this urban legend and then which in the story is actually true oh was he lightning yeah, like conspiracy theory yeah well i mean it's like that movie equilibrium where everybody takes those tablets every day mm. to stop them from feeling any kind of emotion and then you've got the people who don't take it anymore, and they're the people who value art and music and uh, anything which which would act to spark an, an emotion. And how all that that kind of material is deemed as contraband. Was that the movie where like you're not allowed to cry and um, well, you or don't laugh or whatever? Anything. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've I've heard of that movie. I can't remember. Christian oh, Bale. Oh yeah. Cool, cool. All right. Shall we do this? Shall we give our uh, our five hundreds? Right. Yeah, let's do it. Who's first? Am I first? Yeah, you can go first. I'm first. Um, I was quite positive about this story before we talked and the more that we discussed I felt like we were picking all these plot holes and I sort of want to I sort of want to be a bit more forgiving because of the uh, a lot of the original ideas that um, I just don't come across in the other material or the other stories that I read so I sort of want to I sort of want to go I want to go um, 387 is my out of 500 and uh yeah 
that's uh yeah that's i um yeah 387 i um let me get it up here where am i looking yeah okay um yeah 387 i think um i think it was quite an original story and i think plot holes is the wrong word i think it was just more sort of sort of questionable sort of um, moments where you thought, okay, did it really, like, bring the story home, and, but then I sort of, part of me just enjoyed the relationship between um, the author and, and C. Do we actually find out the author's name in the story? Um, anyway. Yeah, we, we know the name of the author, but not at the top of, not at the tip of my tongue. It's like Sylvie or Safaro or something. I this escaped me completely. I don't have Dean. Have you got anything? What's the what's the, is it the, would it be the protagonist, the one who is taking us on this journey? Yeah. Oh, you mean the name of the protagonist. I know. I don't think we find out her name. You just see and Puss and Pete. Pete is the one that probably wants to have a baby, but she doesn't and then as you say max yeah max is the pregnant one yeah some other, there are a couple of others as well right but they mention like because they're there at the time of certain events but uh yeah i think um yeah no i'm i'm good with 387 it's not a bad score it's like yeah i think it's a i think it's a good score hey what's your score um out of 500, I'm going to give it a 393. 393. Alright, let me put that up on the screen. 393. Boo, yeah, okay. Alright, last but and least. Um, Sarah, your turn. Alright, well, yeah, I liked it, except for the dumping, mm. um, but despite that, I like the concepts, I like the things, it made me think, I like to think, mm. so I'm going to give it 401. 401, alright, let me, Sarah score. 401. Alright. Brilliant discussion. I feel... I don't know if it's the whiskey or I don't know if it's the... I haven't turned the air conditioning on, so I'm sweating a little bit. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> yeah, Dean, you said open a window. I did, but I'm still sweating now. Okay. Um... Alright. Okay. Fantastic scores. We are gonna go... I can kind of guess by looking at these numbers. Um what our aggregate score is going to be. So, alright, we read How to Get Back to the Forest. Now, I didn't talk about the title. I kind of wish I did, but, um... It kind of tells you a little bit in the title, but, uh... Save that for another discussion by Sophia Samata. kind of like that last name, but, uh... Anyway, so... Let's see. I'm going to save that. Alright, and we are going to go for our aggregate score... No more total aggregates. I don't know why I ever did that. But uh, yeah, let's have some trumpets for our aggregate score. Wow, your aggregate score is 394. Alright. 394, it's pretty high. It's one of our highest. Let's go to our table. Alright. How to get back to the forest. Alright, it beats Nightfall, it beats the Moral Virologist, it beats the Shape of My Name, it beats the Woodpecker and the Wolf, it beats... It beats Waterclap, it, be it beats Nobody Lives on Burden Street, <gasps> by one point. Right, very good, it's at number one, two, rank fourth in our uh, list, very good. That's a good story. I feel, like right, it was I feel like it was much better than Nobody Lives on Burden Street, but it beats it, so there's that. But, uh, 
good chatting to you guys and uh next next week we're going to read our good friend who wrote the moral virologist greg egan and because we've deleted that from our thing so nobody knows about it so we're going to do another one and it's a really good one about a, a moral quandary and so i'm really excited to read about it it's called axiomatic and uh I got a PDF, so I'll be able to share it with you guys later. But uh, yeah, it's kind of cool. It's got it's got a lot in it, and it's got a it's got a a standoff at the end. So a bit of climax is always good in the story, isn't it? Yeah. A bit cliche, but but what can you do? You're telling a story. Alrighty. Sweet. All right. See you guys. Same time. Just, just. Same place. Bye. I'll see you at work tomorrow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> see you guys. Bye. Just. Bye.